So what would be my top tips to any trader? The things that I've learned, not just from these brokers, but from interviewing some of the world leading traders. Well, first of all, decide on a stop loss exit. Decide before you enter the trade, because trust me, once you are in the trade, emotion takes over and you can't think clearly. So decide on a stop loss. And we'll take, speak more a bit later. Decide on a target. And I'll tell you a bit more where we place that target as well. You must make more from hitting the target than you lose if your stop loss is hit. In other words, if you're starting at, say, 100 and your target at 120 and your stop loss cannot be at say six because then you've got 20 to the upside but 40 to the downside do not lose more than two percent of your total capital on any one trade and the reason for that is again give the previous example let's say you've got a hundred and your target is 120 for whatever technical reason and your stop loss let's say is 85 then those 15 points that you could lose should not see you lose more than two percent of your total capital those 15 points that loss you arrange your trading such that that 15 point loss equals 2% of your total capital and not more. But why? You might say, well, wait a minute, 15 point loss, why can't that be 15% loss of all my capital? The reason is, if you have five consecutive losses and that's very feasible and possible, you still need to be able to survive. If you only lose 2% on each one, you'll only be down 10%. If you lose 10%, you only need 11.1% to break even. But if you lost, say, 20% because of five losing trades or more, then you need to make 25% to break even. If you lose 20%, you need 25% to break even after five consecutive losing trades. After five consecutive losing trades, it's very easy to be down 20% and need 25% to break even. 25% is more than what Warren Buffett makes on average in a year. You've got to be better than Buffett. Whereas five consecutive losing trades, only losing 2% means you only got to make 11.1% to break even. That's manageable. And five losing trades is a pretty bad streak and it's still manageable. What we also found is that winners, whilst on average they were right, say, six times out of 10, some made money and were winners even though they were right four times out of 10. Four times out of 10 still winners, they could still make money if they were right 50-50% of the time. Why is that? How is that? Because they followed these rules. When they lost, they lost a small amount and they set targets which are bigger than their losses. Well, how do you do that if you're only right half the time? Because surely you would, of course, on this, if you're right half the time, make 20 half the time and lose 15 half the time. That means you should make money. But of course, the probability of getting to 20 is going to be marginally less than the probability of getting to 85 and therefore it should all equal out. So what was the difference? Well, they put the odds in their favor that it was more likely that a target of 120 would be hit than the downside of 85 and the reason for that is they tended to follow trends or look for breakouts and so on and I'll discuss other strategies later. They basically ensured as well as the target being greater than the loss that they had momentum in their favor in whichever direction they chose so that it wasn't just a 50-50 chance the price could go either to 120 or to 85 but that they'd have the odds in their favor because of the trend.